Armando and Gloria Cora live in Shelton, Connecticut with their 25-year-old daughter, Cassandra. I couldn't ask for better parents. They have a very strong relationship. Gloria and Cassandra and I have a very tight family bond because we are such a small family. We've always been so close. Everything we have done, we have done all together. Gloria and Cassandra run a fitness studio. Armando is in the National Guard and works as a captain in the Bridgeport Fire Department. Armando's been in the fire department for 25 and a half years. He always liked those dangerous jobs. Well, I joined the Army in 1986. The Army is a very large part of my life. I'm very proud of my father for serving. I admire him for it. The three of us together, we close that circle. We have to be connected. It's a summer night, and Armando has just returned home from two weeks of training with the National Guard. My father approached me and my mom when we were watching TV, said that he felt like he was coming down with something. He was just still a little worn out from his training. I think I remember making fun of him, actually, that I was like, who gets sick in the summertime? Gloria takes his temperature. Armando had 104. Temperature, it was very high. The fever was concerning me. Armando heads to bed early. When Gloria joins him later, she is surprised by what she finds. I walk into the room, and there was a pile of wet clothes. I could hear him moaning and moving a lot in bed, and I never had seen anything like that before. I was sweating profusely throughout the night. My clothing was soaked. I had to change my shirt. At this point, I was kind of still thinking, it's just the flu, I'm just going to wait this thing out. But Gloria thinks otherwise. He was just sweating, sweating, sweating. I was getting concerned. I knew something else besides a fever was happening to him. The next morning, Armando heads to his primary care doctor. She tested me to see if I had the flu, and that came up negative. Well, I thought maybe I had caught some sort of other virus or something at that point. And before I left the doctor's office, she gave me a prescription for an antibiotic. But when Armando returns home, Gloria is taken aback. He took the medication, and he got worse and worse and worse. It was a little frustrating to not know what was going on because I just seemed to get sicker. That's when I started getting very scared. Armando remains in bed for three more days. Then his mysterious illness takes a new turn. He called me into the bathroom. He goes, honey, I'm like, what? what's going on now? He said, look. There was little small red bumps all over my back. I was really, really concerned. Inside me, I knew. Something is happening. Something is changing his body. They apply ointment to the rash in hopes of clearing it up. But the odd string of symptoms continues. Armando started developing this pain on the side. He kept saying, honey, my side hurts. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of strange. That's new that happened. Even to walk was painful. He's telling us that he's scared then I know whatever is going on with him is very serious. Armando endures another restless night. And the next morning, he finds something else alarming. I was looking in the mirror, and I noticed that I didn't look quite the way I normally do. He said, look at my face. I said, yeah, looking at your face. Look at my eyes. I said, yes, I'm looking at your eyes. Are they yellow? His eyes, they were yellow also known as jaundice. Yellowing of the skin and eyes can often occur when there is a problem with the liver. It can be a sign of blood disease, liver disease, or infection. He looks so sick. My mom came in and she said, I'm taking your dad to the ER. There, the doctors run a battery of tests. They tested my urine and said that they found blood and bacteria in my urine. Oh my God, that's all blood. It's a lot of blood. He had a UTI, you know, a tract infection. 
Urinary tract infections are typically caused by bacteria. Approximately 40% of women and 12% of men will have a UTI at some point in their lives. I was like, I, that doesn't make any sense to me, that a UTI will cause all the other symptoms. At this point, in my opinion, my husband is dying, and I need to know what's going on. I think she was reaching her breaking point, and she went and raised a little hell. I lost it. I completely lost it. I went straight to the nurse's station, and I said, someone needs to call the doctor. I need to see the doctor. Internal medicine specialist Dr. Zane Saul takes on the case. He has a whole constellation of findings that are not simple to put together. He was in a lot of pain, and his heart rate was through the roof. His red blood cell count is also very low for a healthy young man. And this raises the concern that he's losing blood, and we don't know where. A low red blood cell count can indicate a number of conditions, including anemia, kidney failure, and internal bleeding. At this point, it was very clear that he needed to stay in the hospital. We didn't know which direction this was going to take. Oh, it was very frustrating for me and my mom. She wanted an answer what was going on. None of you know. All these tests that you've been doing, all the poking and putting them through all these machines, nobody has an answer yet. To see what's going on internally, doctors order a CAT scan. The results show something unexpected. His spleen was enlarged. The spleen filters out damaged blood cells and becomes enlarged when it is seriously infected. There was a question that it had ruptured. If his spleen was about to rupture, that's a surgical emergency. You can bleed to death. I'm sorry, it's just... I knew that things were pretty grave for me. This was not what we were expecting, but certainly this was probably what his pain in his side was all about. So this threw a red flag into everything. It's scary when you have a mysterious illness and you don't know what's causing it and you're just getting worse. I don't think my husband was going to come out of the hospital alive. I'm sorry. I just think about that moment and, and um, and I say, you know, I guess this is it. I think he's going to die, and we're not going to find out what he's dying of. Armando Cora is in the hospital on the brink of death. To solve the puzzling case, Dr. Zane Saul digs a little deeper into Armando's history. We learn from the patient that he had just spent a couple of weeks in a military-type training where he actually lived in the woods. And now we're concerned that he could have definitely picked up something from the environment. So the infectious disease team is called to see the patient. Dr. Saul sends Armando's blood for a new round of tests. And after two days in the hospital, the family finally gets some news. There's about six doctors standing in my room. And they said to me, Mr. Cora, we know what's wrong with you. Armando had a parasite called Babesia microti, leading to a disease called Babesiosis. You know, to think there was something foreign inside of me living was pretty creepy. I never heard about Babesia before. I can see by just being with my husband, it was a very dangerous disease. I really thought that I was going to lose him, so I, I prayed. Inside Armando's body, the Babesia parasites reproduce in his bloodstream, destroying his red blood cells in the process. The parasitic infection sends his spleen into overdrive as it tries to filter out the damaged blood cells, leading to his side pain, staggering fever, and jaundice. This man is sick. This man is very sick. He looked like there was no life on him. 
it really crossed my mind that I may not make it through this. For the first time in my life, I was truly, truly scared for my life. Babesiosis can be difficult to diagnose, not only because it's so rare, but also because its symptoms resemble those of many other illnesses. Many people who have babesiosis will exhibit only mild flu-like symptoms, but in some cases, it can be life-threatening. For those that do survive, the parasite can cause long-term problems with blood pressure and organ function. Dr. Saul puts Armando on a course of antiparasitic medications. For five days, he remains in intensive care. It was tough. It tore my heart out to see him suffering. I think he just wanted to die, to be honest with you, because he was a mess. He was a complete mess. I didn't think I could get any sicker than I already was, but I, I did get even sicker at that point. It was a rough time. But just as Armando reaches his limit, there is a breakthrough. His fever finally broke. Slowly, he started to feel better. I was able to tell him, this is gone. This parasite is gone, and you're definitely going to get better. That's when I knew. I said, yes, he's back. He's going he's gonna to be OK. He will be OK. After five more days in the hospital, Armando is able to go home. The Babesia parasite cycle between two hosts, typically a rodent and a tick. The parasites begin in the salivary glands of an infected tick. When the tick takes a blood meal from a rodent, the Babesia parasites enter the mammal's bloodstream and reproduce. When an uninfected tick bites an infected rodent, the life cycle continues. Though human hosts are a dead end for Babesia parasites, the infection can cause a range of serious medical complications. Armando is convinced he knows where he contracted the parasite. I'm absolutely positive I got it when uh, I was out during my annual training. And you know there was a tick that might have been on my clothing, and I never felt it. While ticks are common in the Northeast, Armando's case is highly unusual. Rarely do we get one case a year. Today, Armando is back home and getting on with his life. It was a roller coaster ride that we do not want to get back on at all. The feeling of having my dad back is just, it's just so tremendous. I can't even describe it. It's just pure happiness. It can happen to anybody. You know, life should be appreciated. I don't think I'm ready to go yet, not from a tech at least. Around 900 cases of babesiosis are reported in the United States each year. The majority of cases tend to occur in the Northeast and Upper Midwest. The best way to prevent babesiosis is to avoid getting bitten by a tick. In tick-infested areas, it's recommended to wear long sleeves and pants, use deep-based insect repellent, and always check for ticks. 